Saturday and taking time to sew with me. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be working on what I am calling my wonky Christmas tree quilt. This is a idea and a pattern that has been sitting on my mind for a while and I just haven't been able to sit down and really get a chance to write up the pattern or do a formal tutorial video on it. Uh, so I decided why not just jump in and get started and sew it live since I actually have a weekend where I can do that. Uh, we don't have any plans this weekend and my husband and my daughter are out doing things and I am going to go see a movie with my son later today. So my morning is free. So I thought, why not work on something I've been wanting to work on? So you can probably see behind me what is going on with this wonky tree quilt. So what the idea was, was that I would take some of my little Christmas scraps, little pieces of fabric that I had, and I cut them down to 2.5 inch squares. And after doing that, I realized I really didn't need to cut them into perfect squares because of what I am doing. But then I had some tree, what I'm calling tree fabric, but it's like green, whatever color you want your tree to be in this pattern, cut into strips. And you're just kind of going to go around the block like a kind of like a log cabin, but you can get crazy with it. You don't have to, to be perfect. You don't have to do anything. Just go around your scrap of fabric and then trim it down to 3.5 inch square after you have it all surrounded. And I thought those would look like little ornaments on the tree. And since you're doing it just kind of crazy however you want, they're not in a straight line. They're kind of moving up and down. And to me, it looks like what your tree kind of actually looks like. It's not lined up perfect. It's not all organized perfect. There's different size ornaments. So I thought it would be really fun. I'm actually liking how it turned out. When I was working on it yesterday when Becca was live last night and when Donna was live last night, I wasn't sure with how it was going to turn out. But the more that I add on to it, the more I'm really liking it. I think it's fun and it kind of fits me and how I like to sew. I just kind of like to wing it and see what happens a lot of the time. So I'm really liking it. And the background is just different um, kind of snowflake fabrics I have. And there's some solid uh, creams and whites in there too, but I'm not even paying attention to how those line up. I just look at my pattern layout that I kind of wing together and just seeing how many needs to be in the row and grabbing them. So it's, it's kind of truly just a, just a, um, a mix of whatever I'm feeling. So I do have in the description of this video, kind of a working list of how this is going since I am just kind of working on it. I just keep adding to it, but you can look there and see what's going on. I'll try to keep up with the chat. I don't know how good I'll be at doing that, but I'm just gonna kind of be trying my best. Um, let me show you some of the fabric that I have here. So for the little, what I'm calling ornaments on the tree, some of them I've cut out kind of fussy. So like this one, I have a little snow globe on it and I'm really excited to see these come together in the tree. I have some that are snowflakes, so I think this is going to be a lot of fun and it's a really fun way to use up any of the kind of scraps you have. So let me see. I know Katie from the Greenland Quilter was in the, ch the chat. Guys Craft 2. Hi, how are you? Phoenix. Oh, nice. Um, Florida, Frank. I grew up in Florida, so I have a very, very, um, a lot of fondness for it. So I honestly just have a mess of stuff going on over here. To keep working on my little wonky blocks. Hi, Pat. Beverly, hi. Um, Katie, if you want to see if if you're still in here, Katie or Donna, if you want to see if I got the night bot to work now that I'm live, if you put exclamation point Donna, exclamation point Katie, I did set up or at least tried to set up little commands so you both could share your your channels. Um, so if you want to try, you can, hopefully it works. I tried my best. I'm not great at tech. And last time I tried to get 
Nightbot to work. It did not work for me. Um, but hopefully it does. I set it up. I tried. <laughs> So I'm just going to work around some of these, these little squares for the ornaments and see if I can get some more of these done while I'm here. I want to try to get as much of this quilt finished that I can today, but um, it's honestly a lot of, of sewing to get all these surrounded. Because let me see, I have a list and I put it in the description of how many of these little wonky blocks are going to be on here. I think, so 111 of these of these little squares. So it's gonna be a lot to surround them all. Yeah, I'll have to get Sean to help me. I don't know why I can't get it to work. I did everything it says to you. Thank you, Donna. I appreciate it while you're on. If you can um, feel free to drop your link, Katie's link, anything, um, all the links. <laughs> I feel bad because everybody that I hop on there, um, their lives and everything, they're all professional with it and have that little robot thing that helps. And I can't seem to get it to work. Uh, I don't know why. So I'm just surrounding this, this square and some of them I get, I'll show you some of them that I have finished actually, because I am just, going around it and I'm not even caring if I have a quarter inch on some of the sides because when it goes next to another one there's still going to be fabric for the tree next to it so it's going to end up being fine in the end and hopefully look like little ornaments so this is one that I had like a snowflake that I kind of fussy cut around I didn't get enough on the edges to get the whole snowflake but I still think it looks cute and on ornaments that are curved, sometimes you don't see the whole snowflake anyway because it's the angle you're looking at it. So I think it's fine. Um, I'm excited with how it's turning out. But I kind of like scrappy, crazy quilts. They're not for everyone, and that's fine. We all like, you know, different things in a quilt. But I think this will be fun and different. And so like with this one, since I've gone around kind of pretty uniform. I just take one of the strips and we'll just put it kind of crooked so that that piece looks like a little sad broken ornament on the tree or something. And if anyone wants to make this little crazy quilt, um, I do have all of the the kind of, I don't think you're going to need as much tree fabric as I put in the description. I just wanted to, um, like what I usually do is put a lot extra to start with. And then I kind of try to figure out how much I actually use, but I don't want anybody to go out and buy, um, you know, if they're going to buy fabric for it, not get enough, but I am going to put up a actual more tutorial video of this quilt at some point. But everything that you'll need is in the description of the video right now as um, as I could tell for planning it out. But I will put up on my buy me a cup of coffee page. I always put up some of my PDFs there. So like I'll have the layout there for it and the fabric details and cutting details um, soon as well. So if you want to make this quilt, you'll have all that info there available as soon as I get it up and hopefully I'll, I'll be able to get it all up after the live today because I have it all written out I just haven't put it into like a formal pdf form now when I trim around this block I'm trimming them to 3.5 inches and any of the pieces that are kind of big enough I put back in my pile to surround some of my other blocks so I don't throw any of the um any of the bigger pieces away so it's just, it's pretty simple. The only other kind of prep that is needed for this quilt, aside from the little wonky blocks, is to make some half square triangles, and these are cut down to 3.5 inches too. I cut 15 of the fabric I'm using for the tree and 15 background at four inches, and then just sewed them 
the two at a time method to get um, two half square triangles each time and then trimmed them down to 3.5 inches. So, and I'll try to keep up with the chat. If you have any questions, I will try to get to them. But so these are two of those for the half square triangles at four inches. And then I just sew on the diagonal about a quarter of an inch. I kind of sometimes do a scant quarter inch to make sure I can trim it down because sometimes my sewing is not straight and even and perfect. Donna, sometimes it is fun to just do something like this where there's no, like you don't have to be perfect with your sewing and just, just kind of sew and have fun with the whole process. So if anyone's jumping in and was wondering about the wonky tree that the thumbnail is talking about, I have some of it starting in the background there and I'll be getting kind of some more formal stuff with that up too, if anybody wants to make it. So two half square triangles. So you'll end up needing 30 of these total for the tree. And they're kind of along the side to form the tree to get it at those correct angles. And then at the top of the tree is an hourglass block. So that's really the only prep you need for this. Um, like with making separate blocks, all the rest of them are just 3.5 inch squares for the background. Yeah, it is, Donna. Honestly, like a lot of the stuff I plan out now that are my own patterns, I'm like, I need to make sure the block is a size for the trim lock because I don't know if I can hold any of those other rulers straight anymore. And especially right now, I, I wasn't cutting when I cut myself with the rotary blade two days ago, I was actually, um, I forgot to close it. So don't forget to close your rotary blade. And I picked it up really fast and I cut my finger with it. Um, so yeah, that was not fun. I didn't get it as bad as, um, some people have. I, I know my friend Cynthia, she lives around here and we met up at one of the quilt shops. She also uh, watches this channel, but she got herself really bad with um, the rotary blade. And thankfully I've only got little nicks, but it's still not fun. These things are so sharp. So let me show you, it's, um, it's not in color or anything, but this is kind of like what the tree is going to look like. And I think I wrote down based on my measurements, what the size should be about. Maybe I didn't. That sounds like me that I wouldn't have. <laughs> oh, I'll try to make, it might be in the description because I feel like I put it somewhere, but it's going to be kind of a bigger, I think it was around, it's a square. I think it was around 50 inches by 50 inches if I remember correctly. But um, I put just kind of idea of what the little wonky, uh, the wonky ornaments would look like but it's not gonna be this uniform when it comes out for me. It was just trying to get the layout so that I could put it all together, but that's what it is um, going to look like, hopefully. <laughs> I know, Donna, I am just going, I, oh, I cut myself, I burn my, and it keeps looking worse. It does not look good, and I've been putting, I've been trying to take care of it, but I think it's because when I, when I close my arm, it just keeps getting hit over and over. And so it's not like somewhere where it can, can actually get better, unfortunately. Okay. I haven't had a chance to look at the poll, but if you, um, if you answer, it looks like there's quite a lot more no's on decorating for Christmas. So when do you wait to decorate? Um, do you wait until, we we typically wait till Thanksgiving, but 
that's because my husband wants to. I push early and earlier to, <laughs> to try to get the decorations up because they just make me happy. I like looking at them, but I know a lot of people like to wait. And I think it makes sense too because there's other, there's other holidays there. Thank you, Donna. Yeah, I, I needed, I needed the tree to be centered. <laughs> so I felt like the easiest way to do that and get the whole quilt centered was to do an hourglass block at the top. Oh, hi, Chris. I hope you're having a good morning. We haven't, we haven't chatted a lot this week, Chris. That feels weird. Yeah, Katie, I do. I, I, I don't have an aloe plant, but I do have aloe because here in Texas, I get sunburns all the time. Um, so definitely been putting stuff on the burn. I just honestly think it's where I was able to burn myself somehow <laughs> that it's making it hard to heal. Um, <laughs> I think Christmas fabric counts as decor. <laughs> Uh, Barb, so my husband and I make these um, rulers ourselves, and it's just uh, like, it's like, a, uh, I can't think of what it's called, like just any handle that you would put on maybe drawers or anything like that, that we purchase and put them on, on these trimmers so that I have something to hold on to and turn, it makes it really convenient. We, we do sell them in our shop. They're, um, they're pretty, I love them. I love using them. I think they make trimming up squares a lot easier. Just keep in mind that they're one size. So I have them in a bunch of different sizes and they're available in our shop in a bunch of different sizes, but they're kind of meant to trim the size block that they are. They have grips on the bottom to hold the fabric and we etch lines in them corner to corner so that you can line up like hourglass blocks and um, half square triangles and everything. So I like them. But yeah, that's what we do. We just put a handle on them to make it easier to trim and turn and hold it in, in place. It's this time of year, Chris. It's just busy, busy. It's so much easier having my husband on here with me to keep up with the chat because he's really good with that, so I'm trying. But uh, Chris just had a really good video go up on her channel for uh, work. It's working on how to work on scrap kit quilts. She's really good at keeping her fabrics really organized with um, color and the shade. And she has a lot of great tips in there for scrap quilts. So definitely check that out. Chris, if you want, you can put a link to your channel. I tried to set up Nightbot to do that for me, but it's not working. But since you are a moderator, you can put your link in and, and link to your channel. And any other links you want to put in. If you want, you can put links to all kinds of stuff. Just keep it somewhat appropriate. <laughs> I don't know what, um, I don't have any kind of like plan on how I'm putting the strips around these little ornament blocks. I'm just going with whatever feels happy. What's hard with doing these live and working on a full quilt is I kind of set everything up different when I'm just up here sewing and I don't know where to put everything because normally I would just sew one side on and stack them all up and go press them over in my actual pressing area where I have more room and then bring them back and sew the next side on. So I'm kind of like, where is all my stuff to kind of do the sitting in one place? <laughs> so I'm just going to trim off when I have a little bit extra trim off to a quarter inch away from the seam. So I don't have a lot of bulk there on this quilt. Since there's going to be a lot of stuff coming together on some of these, I definitely don't want a lot of bulk in the quilt. 
<laughs> Chris, <laughs> just random, just throw up random links. You, you have all kinds of power right now. <laughs> Oh, since you just put up that scrap video, you could link to your blog because it. when people sign up for your blog, don't they get like a free printout of um, tips for organizing scraps? I think, I think it was, the, it was that that was up there, wasn't it? Everybody's going to be wanting to do that in the new year, I feel like. Um, I always, I don't know why. But when a new year starts, I really get motivated to get everything organized and I start going through a lot of my fabric and scraps and I have these ideas for getting it organized by color or something and I'll get like a quarter of the way or halfway done with it and then I'm over it. <laughs> so I think having, having a set plan would probably help me stay focused on that. See, I can't even find my tools because I'm like, like a, I can't stay focused. And I don't know, I think these little blocks are so cute. Just little, little crazy, wonky little ornaments for my tree. I was thinking it would, I would call it like the Charlie Brown tree, but there's, that tree is kind of just not full, right? It's like one little branch hanging there with a with an ornament. So it doesn't really work for that uh, explanation. So I just went with wonky. <laughs> Chris. Oh, hi, Tiffany. I didn't see that you hopped on. But I appreciate you hopping on while I sew up my little wonky tree here. I didn't get it lined up very well. So I feel like anytime I'm trying to explain what I am working on, I have to move because the tree ended up right behind me. All right, I'm going to sew a few more of these little wonky squares. And then I think I'm going to sew a row onto here. So I like seeing it kind of come together. Oh yeah, Katie, she always has some great ideas on, on getting everything cleaned up. Oh, Chris, you're changing the freebie? Oh good, but you'll still have it up because I think the worksheet was really, really good. I'm curious to see what your new freebie will be. If we are already signed up for your website, do we still have a way to get the new freebie you're gonna have up? So who has any Christmas sewing that they're doing this year. What are you working on for Christmas gifts or just for yourself? I think, so I already did my Christmas star quilt. I need to get it completely finished, but I think after this one, this will be the only Christmas, only two Christmas kind of quilts I'm doing this year. I did three last year. I did a collab with Chris from So The Distance, we did kind of a scrappy Christmas quilt. Or I don't know, was yours? Now I'm questioning myself, because I know I use Christmas fabric. Now I'm trying to, I think you use Christmas fabric too, Chris. Um, so I did that one, and I did a Joy wall hanging and a peppermint quilt last year. I'm getting quite a collection of Christmas quilts. Oh, you're very organized, Chris. <laughs> Let's 
I did not know that you planned to change it that often, but now I'm gonna have to keep a lookout for what, what freebies you have all the time. Yeah, I love doing doing these those collabs with you, Chris. They are so much fun. We haven't done one in a while either, I don't think. So I have another little wonky ornament done for my tree. And I think I'm gonna work on a row. So I probably should have numbered these because after I get farther down in here, and I'll do that for when I put the um, when I put the PDF layout up, but it'll probably be easier if I number them so I can easily look and see what row I'm on. But I think I'm on row five and I don't have a pen over here. And I don't know why, because I always keep a pen or a pencil in here. But I think it's probably because my husband was sewing here recently. And I don't think he likes all my stuff tucked in here. But he's just not used to it. That's why. So he hits everything. Um, so I need... I just count how many background pieces I need. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'll lay those out and then lay out the ornaments I need. So I'll need seven background pieces for each side. So I just lay those out. Ooh, 70% off fabric. That's, that's a great sale. Was that online or in a, in a brick and mortar store? I'm, I, if it's online, I may need to check that out. I have been trying not to buy fabric recently because I have so much fabric and I really need to use what I have, but, um, sometimes you're missing something from your stash for a quilt that you need to work on, like a background fabric or like when there's big sales like that I really like to stat um kind of get stuff that will work really good for the back of the quilt um get those big cuts of fabric during sales let's see what should I put there I think I want I really love I don't know if you'll be able to see it well but I really love this snowflake fabric because it kind of has some blues and purples, snowflakes in there and adds like a little more color to the background of the quilt, I feel like. So I know the way I'm doing these background squares for the rows. Um, I know that since I'm not paying attention to where the placement is of the fabric on that row, that some of them might meet up. And I've just decided that I'm okay with that. Um, definitely, if it's something that you like to make sure they're not meeting up, lay it out and and play around with the design. For me, it just, it won't matter to me. It doesn't bother me, but I know everyone's different when it comes to things like that. The only part that I check is the ornaments uh, because I don't want a whole cluster of those to be together but the background I'm fine with because after it's quilted and everything I'm not going to notice it it's not going to pop out as much as the ornaments do so per my layout I need three ornaments in the middle here and then I have half square triangles to create the tree so I'm going to pick out the ornaments and I'll kind of look back and see what I have there to make sure any aren't meeting up really close and hopefully I still have kind of a variety in here because I haven't finished all these little wonky squares yet 
So I'll have some red that's really close together, it looks like. But other than that, I could probably switch these two and it'd be fine. I don't, it's just not something I stress about really badly because uh, I just like this whole process to be fun. So I'll look, see, it'll be okay. It's fine. <laughs> Ooh, Kathleen up since five. That is early. I think I got up around six, so that's still pretty early too. On the weekends, I try to sleep in, but this morning, for some reason, I just could not sleep in. I was up and ready to go, probably because I knew I was doing this live and wanted to get things ready for it. I hopped on and um, watched Sean live this morning to see what he had going on. So I'm just going to, I just stacked up everything in the row in order. But one thing I forgot to check is which way I pressed the seams in the row before. I'm going to make sure I press each row seams in a different direction. And I like to kind of get it going that direction as I sew each square on because it just helps me when I go to press it um, after I get the whole row sewn. <laughs> Julie, that is true. You can never have too much fabric. But the caveat to that is that I only have a certain amount of space for fabric right now. And I used to have a ton of space for fabric, but this whole area where I sew has kind of got taken over by other things. So I definitely need to be, to be careful with how much I get because I mean, I guess I could start sewing fabric like in our closet and stuff like that, but then I just wouldn't know what, <laughs> what I have. Hi, Ian. Good morning. Hi, Donnell. That was so nice of you to hop on. Um, Sean's live with him this morning and keep him company. So if you weren't watching uh, Sean's live this morning, you can always catch the replay on that, but Sean had planned for a guest, uh, um, who was it? Brandy was going to be on with him live with there was some tech difficulties, so she wasn't able to get on. And then um, Don, Don, uh, Donnell volunteered to jump on there with him. You're fine, Kiki. I actually ended up getting on a little bit early. I wanted to plan this live to make sure I didn't overlap with Sean's live this morning. And uh, when he got finished with his live, I just decided to get on after I got my cameras and everything set up since I was already up here working on this quilt anyway. So I appreciate you all keeping me company while I work on this wonky little tree quilt. Actually, I don't think it's going to be that little. It'll be a nice throw size quilt which that's really what I like my Christmas quilts to be. If they're not a wall hanging that I'm working on, I like them to kind of be a lap size, um, more of a quilt that I can cuddle with and watch Christmas movies. Which, what are, if you like Christmas movies, what are the movies that are always on your list to watch each Christmas? We always watch the Home Alone movies and Santa Claus. What else do we watch? There's a couple movies that we always have in our rotation for Christmas. Netflix actually has a few movies that I really like that are Christmassy that are 
like Netflix originals. The Christmas Night, I think, is a lot of fun. <laughs> Katie, don't let Becca hear that Die Hard is one of your favorite Christmas movies. I'm pretty sure that was on her live where she was saying that it is not a Christmas movie. <laughs> Oh, The Grinch is a good one. I love The Grinch. So there's a couple versions of The Grinch. I think there's like an older animated version, a newer animated version. And I think there's some that are, what are like, I think, isn't it um, Jim Carrey that's in, in one of them? So I guess which one do you like or do you like all of them? I can't remember disliking any of them, any of the versions that I've watched. <laughs> Katie, it definitely is. And I feel like the whole Die Hard situation with whether it's a Christmas movie or not, it's either you think it is or you don't think it is. There's like not an in-between <laughs> agreement on it. Martha, I am too. I... Um, we don't have cable anymore. We just have a few subscription services. But when we had cable, I always looked forward to the Hallmark Christmas movies to come out. There are so many good ones. And they're all the same. They have the same plot, pretty much. But I still love watching them. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. All like pretty much all the Grinch movies I've watched are pretty good. So, Katie, do you like all of the Die Hard movies or just the first one? I think the first and the second one both take place at Christmas. I like the first and second and the most recent one. I can't, well, actually, I don't think I've seen the most, most recent one, but um, there's one with, I think, Justin Long in it that I think that one's pretty good, but I think the third one might be the one that kind of bores me. I don't think that one's great. <laughs> Marie, that's so true. I feel like all the Hallmark, uh, just all the Hallmark movies in general, Christmas or not, they're probably all very similar. But there's something about them that like I just, it's maybe the ease of watching it where you know what to expect. So it's just kind of like a comfort, a comfort movie. If, even if it's a new one you've never watched, it's almost like you've watched it. So it's, it's just easy, easy watching. <laughs> Why is it only the girl finding true love? That's a good question, though, Martha, I feel like. just have a few more squares left in this row. I have a mess over here, but I'm going to press it after. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and sew it on to kind of see how this tree builds. Usually I would get all the rows done in a quilt and then sew it together. But it's kind of fun seeing this quilt come together since this is the first time I've ever made this this guy. <laughs> it's kind of just just a work in progress, see how it goes type of quilt. Oh, that had to be hard, Marie, to to not be able to get around when that movie was being filmed. I, I, 
think it was Stepford Wives. I think that's what the movie, I might be wrong because I'm really bad at remembering the names of movies and all that. But I was in New York City uh, when I was in college with the art club that I was a part of. And we went up there for a trip and was walking around and they were filming a scene of just people walking out of the subway for, I think it was that movie. If not, it was a movie. I don't know what. And they had that whole area blocked off. And since we didn't know the area, we didn't really know how to get around. So we just decided to stand and watch uh, them shoot that scene for a while. And I just couldn't imagine how if a movie is getting filmed somewhere for a long period. Because that was just them doing one scene for some reason. Um, like how logistically hard it would be to get around your area with something like that going on. All right, so I have that row sewn, and I really need to find my pen so I can number those rows on that. And then it'll help me remember to do that before I load the, the graphic file up. <laughs> That's true, Marie. With something like that going on, there's no way you can, and they all know, so they're like, yeah, we see why you're late. <laughs> I'm gonna forget where I put those clips now that I just thought about it when throwing that down. So let's see, I'm gonna make sure that I did the right row before I sew it on. Look at my picture. So I think I did fine. Because I do not want to have to pull out the stitches for a full row. So let's make sure again. I think we're good. <laughs> uh, that would be... I could see me doing that though. I'm not going to pin... If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, I don't pin often. And especially with a scrappy quilt like this. And that's meant to be wonky and just a fun sew. I definitely don't spend the time pinning to make sure the seams meet up. I just need them to be close-ish. If they're close-ish, then I'm happy. Oh, frozen water bowl. Were they pretty uh, unhappy or do they like, do your dogs just like to lick the frozen the frozen water bowl. I don't know if my dog would know what to do. When it was, um, when we had the freeze, I think it was two years ago here in Texas, uh, our dog loved the snow. He loved running around a bit, but he didn't quite know what to think of it since he wasn't used to all of that. Uh, he, and I honestly didn't know what to do with him because he gets kind of full and bushy and he had, when he came in from running around in all the snow, it was like all caked on his paws and his fur. And he was just, he went to his bed and was just kind of chewing all the snow and ice off. And I was like, worried, do I need to take all the snow off of him or like, Will he get frostbite? I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't sure, but I figured like with animals, they must be able to know how to handle that. And the fur is probably a little insulating. I don't know, but it's warm here. Let me see. Well, it's not too bad. It's 65 right now. It got up to the eighties yesterday, I think. It cooled down for a little bit here and then it got warm again. But it's mainly been cooling off pretty nice in the evening right now. 
pins her for the week. <laughs> I think I like to just say I like to wing it, but really the pins, I'll probably poke myself with them. And I know, no, not probably, I know I will, because when I'm sewing across here, I always forget about them and I, and I constantly hit them and jab myself. Hence all the injuries I have, rotary nick, burn, and... You may fall down the stairs, but I burn myself and cut myself constantly. We just have different injuries. That's probably, that makes sense, Katie. He made it through, so I think it was fine. He was inside warm, but... I was definitely concerned and wasn't sure what, if I needed to make sure all the snow got off of him. <laughs> so if you're just hopping on, I'm working on a wonky Christmas tree quilt that, that popped into my head one day that I wanted to make and decided to just start it live because I kept planning to work out the pattern, test it and all that. And I never sat down and found time to. So I decided I would just wing it. Uh, some of the cuts and everything I tried to put in the description of this video, some of them I need to adjust. Well, not, not none but one. And that was the hourglass block. And there's just one of them. I sized it way too large because uh, I wasn't sure what to cut, what I needed to cut the triangles to. So I just went way larger than needed to make sure I would have the right size. And you know, after I did that, I thought to myself, I was like, Fallon, you probably could have just looked up what the dimensions needed to be using Google, but I didn't. <laughs> so I'll try to adjust that later, but I'll probably honestly forget. It. But I don't have it up yet. I need to make a few adjustments to it. After looking at it, I need to add row numbers and everything on here. But the PDF, if you are liking this crazy quilt and how it's coming out, I will have um, some PDF instructions that will be free to download with the layout and the sizes and stuff like that. Honestly, I don't just injure myself when sewing. I injure myself when cooking too. I think my mind just likes to wander. So I um, am not paying attention as close as I should and cut myself or burn myself. I'm just going to finger press the seam across here. And then I'll use some heat and I'll hang it back up so we can see how the tree looks with the next row. And I'm going to have to step off camera for a minute because I'm going to have to number all those rows because I have no idea. I know I will mess up and sew the next row wrong <laughs> if I don't get them numbered. I don't know what I was thinking not numbering it. Hi Kelly, Quilts and Cruises, you've probably been in for a bit and I haven't noticed anything. I'm having a hard time keeping up with the chat. Uh, Mary, I will try to get on there and fix the ads. Um, I'm sorry about that. Let me grab my computer. I was going to check that before I went live to see what the 
ad thing was doing. Um, and I forgot. I meant to get with Becca or Sean because they told me there's a way to turn them off completely. And let me see. Let me know in a little bit if you get ads because I hopefully I fixed it. Um, I apologize. Hopefully I turned it off. I meant to check and make sure I did before I got on here, but it looks like I forgot. I'm sorry. So what I do is when I, whenever I set up the live, I just kind of set the same settings as the video before. And I think it puts, and that puts it to ads instead of changing the settings each time I set up a video for live. So hopefully that fix it. Thank you for letting me know. And if you let me know before that, I am so sorry that I didn't notice it. But hopefully it's fixed now. Because I know that's annoying when you're trying to trying to watch watch what's going on. Oh, my iron turned off on its own. So while that heats back up so I can press that row, I will do another one of my little wonky blocks. So have this one here. I already have one side sewn on. So I'm just going to keep surrounding it kind of like you would do with the center of a log cabin, but I'm kind of changing the angles of it so it doesn't look perfectly square whenever it gets onto the tree. Maybe my tree has broken ornaments or maybe it's, um, they just has unique sizes and shapes to the ornaments. I just wanted it to look crazy and fun. Mary, I think they changed how the ads work on lives and I just haven't, I haven't gone in there and really figured out how to make sure they, they don't happen like a crazy amount of times because honestly that's no fun. Like the lives are fun because you, you get to chat and interact and the ads just kind of get in the way of all that. So I'm just going to keep surrounding that. Looks like my iron's heated up. So I can, I'm going to finish off this one surrounding it and then I'll press that row and put it up. Uh, Marie, I do use EQ for patterns. That's what I put this into. Um, obviously I just, this, the kind of wonky ornaments aren't what they're actually turning out to look like. It was just to give me an idea um, for layout and everything, but I do use EQ. I really, I really don't love it though, to be honest. I think it's really hard to just intuitively work in it. So I'll usually just use it to get a layout idea. Um, but I, I don't, I think it needs some work and I wish I knew, I knew tech enough to go in there and make it more user friendly. Uh, but yeah, and so I think it's really all you, all you have, unless you want to do design everything in, um, like illustrator or something like that. <laughs> Chris, I don't know if this is a good showing <laughs> of my process, but maybe it is because I kind of, I, I have a, I have an interesting way that I like to work through stuff and it's never the same though. <laughs> Ah, uh, Julie. Yeah, that's why I like getting on here too, is because it's so fun to actually be able to chat and, and, you know, I know it's not the same as being in person, but it's still fun to chat and be on here with other people that like to sew as well. I understand, Chris. That's fine. I'm just hoping to see, I can, I'm hoping that I can get a few of these rows done because I have so many things planned 
this year and I really want to get this quilt done um, by Christmas because I think it's going to be a fun and unique one. So I had this big slot of time to sew and work on it and I thought why not get on here and chat while I sew since my house is quiet. <laughs> So there is one of those, and then I'm gonna get the um, that row press so I can hang it up so you can see how it's coming together, even though I'm kind of sitting in front of it. <laughs> Kelly, but your tree does not have to be green. There's all sorts of colors of Christmas trees out there now. You can have your tree whatever color you want it to be. I'm going to have to to press this better later. And I did remember where I put my clips, so that's good. I am going to be sitting in front of the tree part but you have a chance to kind of see how it's coming together. I think it's going to be really cute. It definitely won't be for everyone, but because it, it, it is kind of crazy and a lot of people like uniform, but I think it's going to work out. So I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be fun. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Oh, thank you, Martha. Um, oh, that would be cute, Martha. I think this is one that you could definitely make unique to you. And, you know, my daughter would probably want her tree to be a different color. If I made something like this for her, you could put all the ornaments exactly the same or just do two different fabrics and alternate them to make it fit um, what you would like. But, um, yeah, I think it's going to, I'm happy with how it's going to turn out. I was really worried last night when I started working on it. I started sewing it when Becca was live and worked on it some when Donna was live. And I was really worried when I got just the first two rows and had the one little wonky ornament. And I was like, this is not going <laughs> to turn out how, oh, thank you, Linda, for reminding me. I do need to get my, I do need to get a pen or a pencil. Yeah, I did not think it was going to turn out, but that's why sometimes you have to keep working. Thank you for reminding me, Linda, because I would have started working on the next row and get the wrong one going. Did I grab a pin that doesn't work? <laughs> Yes, Julie, Chris is amazing. And I know you love those scrappy quilts too because I think you're in one of the groups I'm in too, the Scrap Enthusiast group on Facebook. And you shared some of the stuff you're working on on there. And yeah, it took me a while to get used to the look of um, scrappy quilts because I tend to like things really uniform too. But I think there's something so much more fun and unique with a scrappy quilt. Um, I don't know. I just, I think it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, Linda, you saved me from ripping. <laughs> uh. All right, I'm gonna work on another row if I can. I may need to start making some different colors of these though. Um, I need five wonkies for this wonkies for this row. So I need to make sure I have a nice variety of them. I'm getting a lot of red, but I could throw that over there. Let's see if that works. And what row am I on? 
I'm gonna put check marks next to the ones I did. <laughs> That'll help. Wow, I'm already on row six. I cannot believe that. I did use some of the rows last night though. Grab two half square triangles. Yeah, I see so many beautiful quilts in that, that scrappy quilt group. They have such good ideas. And let's see, I may need to move some of these. I think if I just move these two, that'll work. And if I was wrong, I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, thank you, Christy. Yeah, he would love to be here live with me. He absolutely loves going live and chatting with everyone, but he is busy this weekend. <laughs> the green, the half square triangle blocks or the little wonky squares that I'm making. These squares. I'm going to put... Um, I filmed some clips of fill of each of the blocks that you need to make for this quilt. So I will put a formal tutorial video up for this quilt as well um, as this live. I just wanted to have a big chunk of time to work on it. So there will be footage of each of the steps for this quilt that is condensed down to a shorter video than this, but I have been working through each of the blocks in this live too. Well, thanks for hopping on Maria. I hope you have a great day and a great weekend. So there will be all of that, all of that fun stuff too. So I need six background squares for each side of the tree portion on here too. So I'm gonna get those out. I'm trying to get a variety of different prints because I have a ton of of different cuts of fabric that have snowflakes on them or just plain or like have a tone on tone. These have little polka dots. It looks like snow to me falling. So I said that's going in here too. And that's why I kind of decided also to um, to make the tree just one fabric because I at first I was going to do a couple different green fabrics that I had in my stash and because the background is scrappy and I'm doing a bunch of different ornaments for my scraps I decided to just use one fabric for the tree and since the tree fabric happens to have a lot of different colors in it already I thought I'll just do one one fabric for that portion. Hi, daughter. I'm surprised you're not out doing stuff. Or maybe you are out, but just got on anyway. <laughs> okay, I got sidetracked and I needed to count to see where I'm at with, <laughs> with my background squares for each side. So I just count those out and sandwich the piles between there and sew through it. If you need to have them laid out, that's a good idea too to keep from having to bring the seam ripper out. But um, I'm usually, I'll, I'm saying it now, but I'll end up having to rip that usually just stacking them in order like that for me keeps them in order pretty good. And I don't get too mixed up. Let me see which way I'm pressing. I pressed the seams in the opposite direction of the row before, so I needed to check back and make sure I'm pressing in the right direction. Lorelai, you better not be going to a quilt store without me. That's my daughter, if you don't know. <laughs> you better not be going to a quilt store without me. I'll be so sad. Uh, I, Lorelai is such a good name, isn't it, Kelly? 
So it's funny, everyone would ask me if she is named after the show, the characters from the show Gilmore Girls, and I never watched that show. So I'd always say, no, we just got it from the name from a baby book. And, uh, <laughs> And everyone would say, you need to watch the show. It's so good. So I finally watched the show and I like it. It's a, it's a cute show. Uh, and so she started watching the show too, because everyone would ask her if her name is from that show as well. And I think if you're still on Lorelai, I think you just started telling people yes, right? Instead of explaining it each time. Tiffany, what are you working on? I know you said you're you're just listening as you work, but I know you had a project you were working on when I watched you live the other day. Are you still working on that or did you move on to something else? Lorelai, you, you guys aren't going to a quilt store, I don't think. <laughs> And to ask me if I need anything from the quilt store is just silly because you know I do. <laughs> I need everything. All the things. All of it. <laughs> Christy, right? <laughs> we all have a list. <laughs> I need some more gray thread. I need some more white thread. I need some more cream thread. I need some Christmas fabric. I need... Um, I need all the things. Hi <laughs> guys, craft you. Yeah, I would, I would bet that you get that question a lot. And sometimes I think names are picked from, you know, shows or movies that you really like, but it's funny how names that are in popular movies or TV shows, it's automatically thought that it prob the name probably came from there. Yeah, Kate, exactly. I can come up with a lot. Just give me literally 30 seconds to write it all down. <laughs> if someone is offering, then yes. <laughs> Julie, right? <laughs> I don't even have to have a list. You guys can all put stuff in the, in the chat that would be perfect to pick up. Starch, there's batting. I always need batting. What? You guys are not. I feel like I'm missing out. <laughs> well, take a lot of pictures for me so I can at least live vicariously through you both then, I guess. <laughs> what a bummer to not be there. <laughs> I know, Martha. I'm in the middle of sewing. I can't I can't text a list. <laughs> Gray thread for sure. Gray thread. Um oh heck, what's the name of the one I like? Katie, it was the same one you had that you like to use. It was it was funny when you said the thread that you use. It's the exact same one. I'm horrible with thinking up names. My husband can vouch for me. There'll be a movie I wanna watch and I have to describe it. I could have watched it a million times. And, um, but whenever it, the name is said, I'm like, yes, I that was right there on my, the tip of my head. Yes, Katie Dove, I love the, the same that same color too. And whenever you 
whenever I see it, I'm like, that was it, but I can't think of it on my own. I don't know why. Well, drive safely if you guys are driving, husband. If you have the sound on, please be careful. Yeah, or a fill. Katie, I like it too. And for the same reason that you said um, that it like, it seems to blend in with everything. Um, it seems to really, because I don't like changing out my thread all the time, like with these darker pieces coming together. I feel like whenever I use a white there, if, if, you see the threads through, the white stands out, but the gray doesn't seem to, especially that dove color. It, I feel like it blends in really, really well. <laughs> you like to stress me out, husband, even when you're not here. <laughs> get two of these together right next to each other that's fine we're just gonna I, I feel like I went ahead and said when I stack these up um I wonder if I accidentally picked up two. Ooh, that was yep I accidentally picked up two of the same instead of one I was about to have to, to pull some stitches after saying that the way I stack these up usually works out fine for me but not if you miscount how many you put in there You all are all looking out for me in the chat and I appreciate it. <laughs> Kelly, you know what's funny is, uh, I don't know why that happens with machines because, and even the same brand because, oh, who was it that I was watching? Um, and I'm bad with names. It was Slay Arts Shannon. I was watching Shannon and she has the same machine as me and she was using the glide thread in hers and it was working perfectly. And I tried using that glide thread in mine and it did not like it. It was a mess. And I found that so interesting because I would love to be able to use that thread because I get tired of cleaning out all the lint under here. And the glide thread I heard you do not, um, the, the glide thread I heard does not produce as much lint, but this thread has been what the machine seems to like. So I don't really know why uh, they are so finicky. I wonder, I wonder, Jonna, if that is it. If if I'll have to ask, um, I'll have to ask her if she uses a different needle because I usually either use a universal needle or a quilting needle pretty much exclusively unless I'm sewing a jean quilt. But maybe, and she could use a different brand too. Um, Pat Boo. So I am using a ton of different background colors and I'm just throwing them in whenever. So I have some cream here and the snowflakes are from, um, so some of the snowflakes, like this one, hopefully you can see it well enough. And uh, let me see if I have one of the other ones still here. So this snowflake and the kind of darker one here and here, those are from um, Monique Jacobs from Open Gate Quilts. They're from her most recent Christmas line. And I also have some other fabric here that is from that. Like on the tree trunk for this quilt, I am, instead of using brown, which I put in the description of the video, I am using some of her fabric and I cut it out so that um, the snowflakes are gonna be on the trunk of this tree. So some of her fabric is in here. Some of the background fabric, what did I do? I put away the, oh no, it's there. Oh my goodness. 
Then some of the background fabric is just, like I said, creams and some textured like polka dots that are tone on tone. It's just a mix of fabric. One of them is, this is Scandinavian winter. It's clothwork fabric. I still have some in my shop. It's snowflakes that are kind of different colors like uh, teals and purples. I'm gonna have to recount this because I think I put some of my fabric away. Oh my goodness. Um, so it's just a ton of different background fabric, or not technically, the background fabric is just a bunch of different fabric I pulled from my stash that I thought would work in this, in this quilt. Okay. I'm going to have to double check this because I feel like I messed up. <laughs> so I think I just said I needed six background pieces on each side. So six, then I have those. Oh, it worked out. And my iron turned off again. So let me see in the chat. Yeah, Pat, I love having a big stash of, of different kind of low volume background fabrics for scrappy quilts because it just makes them really fun, I think. Yeah, Christy, I I wonder if there's just some slight adjustments I may need to make to get that um, glide thread to work. And it probably, that probably is honestly the case. But I don't know. I, I like things to work right away. So when I put it in and it wasn't sewing right, I just kind of was like, okay, well, that was fun. I'll go back to my regular thread because I won't have to mess with it and it'll work fine right away. <laughs> So if you're just hopping on, I'm working on, I have it pinned up back here. It is my wonky Christmas tree quilt, and I will put some extra information up on it. Um, I'll have like a PDF available to download if anybody wants to make the quilt to make it easier, but a lot of the cuts are in the description of the video right now. And it's pretty, as long as you have the layout, and I'll put that layout up, it's a pretty easy, easy quilt to make, I think. Just a lot of sewing to get the, the little, what I'm calling wonky ornaments in place. <laughs> My husband's like, that's what we used to do, but Christmas is already... Christmas is already happening, um, decor-wise, at our house. <laughs> all right, do you all want me to... Sh to sew on the next row or work on another row, work on some wonky blocks. Let me know what you want me to, what you want to see happen. Do you want to see the quilt, quilts come together more or more of these little crazy blocks? I'll start working on a crazy block because they're, they're pretty easy to get together. I think I'm going to put this one on the corner and make it a really weird little shape. Christmas happened a lot earlier decor wise this year than years past. I keep I keep trying to sneak the decor up e earlier and earlier each year, I think. So I just have a bunch of random, like the tree fabric I'm using is green, and I just have it cut to different sizes, like different widths, to really make these, blo these blocks come out crazy. Um, dancing is not going to happen. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, since my husband and daughter are teasing me about going to a quilt shop without me, um, what if you had like a opportunity to go into a quilt shop and just buy whatever, there was no limit on it, somebody gave you an unlimited shopping trip, what would be the first thing you would go buy in there? Would it be a new machine? Would it be um, a fabric line, like getting a full line of fabric that you've really, really wanted but is priced high? Um, what, what would you want? I can't even, like, I would be so overwhelmed if I was able to go into a quilt shop and just buy whatever, whatever I wanted. I think I would probably get a couple, like, I would get, like, a half yard bundle of one of, is it La, I can never remember if it's Lala Boutique or one of her current lines because a half yard bundle you could make so many quilts from that, and I love her fabric. But, I mean, my go-to answer would probably honestly be a long arm. I really, really want to learn how to, like, long, long arm my quilts and get them quilted. So what machine, like what sewing machine would be your dream machine then? Hmm. I need a longer piece. I have a quilt kit that I purchased from... Um, oh, what is her husband? If you are still on, what is Liz's? Is it quiltingcat.com? She has some quilt kits on her site that are such a great price. Like, I think her fabric comes out to around four dollars a yard, and it's beautiful fabric in a lot of those kits. So, even if you don't like the pattern so much. I bought one and just used the fabric for something else because it was such a great price for the amount of fabric that I got. Christy, I love, I can't always get half yard bundles, but I love getting them because then you can use that fabric for almost any pattern because sometimes with the fat quarters, which I love buying the fat quarter bundles. It's not enough fabric for a pattern that I want to do. So, I mean, half yards aren't always either, depending on, depending on the pattern, but I feel like it gets you closer. I didn't think through how long it would take me to do 111 of these wonky ornament blocks. I definitely did not fully think it through, but they're so cute. So after getting them all surrounded, I trimmed them down to um, 3.5 inch squares. And I'm just gonna use this one instead of moving that back and forth. I think I'll move this over to press on and then I'll have a side to cut and press. I know you guys can't see me over here, so I apologize. Maybe I could move it over in this space and then I'll be on camera. I need to get more organized. That's what I need. I need my husband here to keep me organized. And then just my irons far away. That's probably better. No, close while I get this line back up. These little snow globes on this fabric 
is just so cute. I can't remember the line it was from, but it was from last year. And I got some of the fabric in, I think the Jenny's Countdown to Christmas box. And then I think I also got some from the Open Gate Cool box. And those little snow globes are so cute. And I love collecting snow globes. So I had to fussy cut out some of those to be on the quilt. Okay, that's better. It looks like on the screen where you can see what I'm doing a little better. I, I need to be better organized for for these. <laughs> you would like to own your own sewing machine? We can share. How come you don't want to share with me? Martha, right? <laughs> Him and my daughter are very organized with their Christmas wish list this year. They use Canva and put photos on there of what they want and links to the item. They are very organized with their list and me and my son are not. <laughs> We're just like, I don't know, stuff. So I'm just trimming off, since I'm putting these strips on at just odd angles, I'm just trimming off any excess that is on there to about a quarter inch. Um, it really doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And since I'm pressing on my mat, I keep like a foam board that I use as a design board under my wool mat so I don't warp my mat, just a little added protection. <laughs> you don't want to share. I actually haven't turned the setting back up on the machine. It's still at that mid midway point my husband was sewing at the other day. It's kind of nice. It keeps me it keeps me from messing up from going too fast. The list. Um, I was just doing the, I was just writing down, um, the rows that I didn't, I didn't think to put rows on here. Is that what you're talking about? I did write down the rows, um, or do you mean, are you talking about the wish list? That's all fancy. <laughs> think it's nice that they put together the list all fancy for me and have links to everything. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, Christy, no. He has, I think he got a few rows done for the Christmas tree and he's going to work on it some more. I don't know if he's going to finish the tree before the next live and work on some different blocks or um, if he's going to finish the tree on the next live we do. That one's not long enough. I have a lot of, a lot of different fabrics to choose from over here. And the way it's all piled, I can't see the length of them until I pick it up. I don't know if I want that angle going the same as the other. It looks too planned that way, so I'm gonna make the angle go in a different direction. <sighs> the list for the wish list. Okay, so he's gonna finish the tree on the live that we do. I think he'll be able to, since he got all the prep work done, like all the, um, all the half square triangles, a lot of that busy stuff. So now it's just piecing the row. So I think he should be able to get the tree, the tree done on the next one.
Are any of you that are watching in the chat working on a quilt right now as well? I think Julie, if she's still in the chat, is working on something. But are any of the rest of you sewing while you're while you're watching the live? If so, what are you working on? A particular pattern? Or are you just doing something scrappy? I'm sure Julie is working on something a little more scrappy. So there's another one done. I'm going to add it to my pile. These are all the rest of them that I still have to make. So I have a big, a big undertaking. And I had a lot of this print that I really liked. And I probably need to get a little more intentional where I put these or they're going to be really close together. But that kind of happens on a tree too. Sometimes you get a lot of uh, the same colors close together. Oh, Jamie, I think and I think he's planning to have some of those those wooden trays available next week but if he's still in the chat he can correct me but i think we're hoping to have them up soon um excuse me i need to grab a tissue my allergies have been crazy this winter i don't know why but it feels like it's been worse than before um past winters but I think he's hoping to have some of those trays up next week, along with um, some of those uh, seam rippers and stilettos that he makes, the combination ones with the wood handle. Those are really nice. They're really pretty. So uh, those should be added in next week, I think. A Sudoku quilt top. Oh my goodness, Kelly, that sounds like it would be awesome. That is such a cool idea. Becca's Among the Stars quilt along. Oh, I bet that's pretty. I need to, I, don't, I started these and then I got sidetracked. I have one side on them and I need to work on those too. So I'm gonna set that to the side and work on those. My brain is not quite working this morning. I have a few projects that I really want to work on, and I think that's what, I know everybody really, really likes tutorial videos and stuff like that, but I think some of my videos next year at the start of the year are gonna be more aimed at finishing some of the projects I've started and have not finished like I have a red and white quilt a red and cream quilt that I got a decent amount of blocks done on and then it kind of got sat to the side I would like to finish that one um some other stuff and maybe kind of do some videos talking about getting motivated to get back into a quilt that was kind of abandoned for a bit I have some that I did that with because I got frustrated with how it was turning out or didn't like how it was turning out. Um, and maybe some of them, and I think Becca talked about a little bit, need to be just ones that she let go of. Um, uh, taunting me some more is not nice, husband. I do not love that you're at a cool shop without me. <laughs> I'm just going to trim this off without using a ruler because it was just a small little piece. And I love to do tutorial videos, so I still will obviously have those on my channel too. Just I think at the start of the year... And it could change. I, I often change what my plans are based on what I'm motivated to work on. But I'm really hoping to work on some of the projects that kind of are just piled up that 
that I need to finish. And then I have some from the Fat Quarter Shop when I was doing the Sew Sampler Box. Some of the um, patterns that I got from them, I got the rest of the fabric for to work on and they're just sitting in containers too. And I really want to work on those. Kelly, I will have to go check that out. I don't know how I missed that because that's, and now it seems like I have a cool idea for my husband <laughs> with that because that sounds really awesome. But I, if you're just winging it, I love that style. I like to do that too and just kind of, you know, work, work on it as you go. I feel like you learn a lot from doing that too with a quilt. Ooh, a retreat sounds awesome. <laughs> Kelly, I need to go find, maybe I will pin a comment to your quilt because a lot of people seem interested in it and, I, and I'll try to remember to do that when I'm done to pin, pin a comment that links to your quilt uh, video for that Sudoku quilt because that's awesome. That sounds... <laughs> Martha, I do like gifts, but a quilt shop I never have been to sounds fun too. <laughs> Julie, well, thank you. I, I honestly feel really frazzled right now trying to keep up with the chat and working on my project and not messing it up. But it is fun to be up here chatting with um, with everyone instead of just being up here sewing by myself, which is often, well, I guess maybe not all the time. There's a lot of times someone up here with me too. Uh, and then I really like listening to audiobooks when I sew or I'll have a movie on that I'm really, really used to um, playing in the background. There's a lot of podcasts I like to listen to. So there's a variety, but it's it's fun doing doing this and having something different going on. So I really surrounded this one good. There's going to be a lot cut off, but I did some different kind of angles on here to make it look a little bit crazy. And something I like to do too, instead of kind of putting the the um, ruler on here straight lining up kind of with one of the lines sometimes I make it where it's um, on point to have a different look in the quilt too so I'll show you that after I trim this off so instead of it kind of looking more straight square I have one that's on point, so it gets it a little different look too. I'm gonna save some of these because these might work on the ends of some of some of these little blocks. This one's from Monique's fabric line from this year too, from Open Gate Quilt. Um, this fabric with the tree on there, I kind of fussy cut that out. Some of it's gonna get cut off when I add on um, these strips along the side, but I think it'll still it'll still look cute in here. Let me see if I can find some short. I have, I cut so many different strips, different sizes. I will, don't worry, I'll share uh, pictures of this quilt in my group when it's finished and on my channel so you can see it because there's no way I'm going to get, get this <laughs> finished on this live. I did not, I did not think it through how long it would take to do all these wonky little blocks. I knew it would take a while, but I really didn't think through how long it would really take. And that's okay. It's still fun to get a big chunk of this quilt finished. Sylvia, what kind of, what podcasts do you like to listen to if you feel comfortable sharing uh, what you, what your go-to is? I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts, but there's some 
that aren't true crime that I do like to listen to, like Mike Rose podcast. His are always fun. And I just like his voice, too. One of, like, my favorite is to listen to audiobooks, but I need to, our library that is close to us has been closed for a while, um, because they are building a new one, and I lost my library card, but you had access to free audiobooks, so, and purchasing audiobooks is really expensive especially with how fast I listen to them um sewing because I will I can listen to I can end up listening to them for a few hours so I need to go get my library card figured out so I can log back in and listen to some of the audiobooks for free but I love mystery audiobooks any of those are are right up my alley <laughs> uh the appeal is that i don't really know i think my computer died Which is okay because that's not running the um, the live. It was just helping me when I was facing a different direction with the chat. But it was fully charged, so I don't understand what Apple does with their computers, but they do not hold a charge for very long. I feel like the appeal for me with true crime podcasts is one, there's a mystery to it because the way they usually present the story is you don't know what happened and it kind of builds from there. So it feels like, like novels that I like to read, but there's also for me, the psychology behind why people even do what they do. I like the podcasts that really tell the the history of the people involved and everything like that too. What do you mean the quilt shop didn't have anything? Is it closing? <laughs> yeah, Donna, I think, I think for a lot of people it is just really hard to listen to. I don't know, it's the psychology of it for me. I just do not understand uh, how, how people can do some of the things they do. I don't think I want to be able to understand though either. Did anybody snag Carolina Moore's, I think it's her that just came out with that new, that new ruler that lights up. I'm curious about it. Oh, yeah, I think a lot of quilt shops do that um, where they have a certain brand of of thread that area they may just not have a big a big um fan base for orfil
Kate, I think that would work out great and have it be more of like a wall hanging style or um, like a table topper, or table runner. I think that'd be really cute, but I would love to see it if you make a smaller version. It would be really easy to plan it out that way because you just do the layout, but the blocks are just smaller. I think that's a really good idea. I think she sold some at the quilt festival here in Houston too, but uh, we weren't able to get over there. We wanted to go at least one day, but it just didn't fit into our schedule. But I heard, um, I heard that she sold out of them pretty fast at the, the quilt festival. I think the ruler is such a good idea that she did. Uh, the only thing I would love on it is if the lights did the quarter inch or ate it. I don't know how it would work without seeing it in person because those are the ones that are the hardest for me to cut. Um, but I'd have to see it in person because maybe you can see all those other lines easier too. Um, like in person because it, it, it'd have to be really hard to get a photo of that with it lit, lit up. Uh, Rosie, so on, oh, thanks Tiffany for stopping by, have a good day. So Rosie, on the ruler that I'm using is um, just a metal handle, like something you would use in your house for like drawers or something like that but me and my husband actually make these um he actually makes more of it than i do because i do not uh know how to work some of the tools that do this but um we make them in a bunch of different sizes they are in our shop but yeah we attach the handles on they're permanently on there so that it just makes it easier to trim. And this is really thick acrylic that we use. It's a quarter inch, so you're a lot less likely to uh, cut yourself. And I know I'm wearing a Band-Aid right now, but it was not from using one of these. It was actually because I forgot to close my rotary cutter after I was cutting, and when I went to pick it up, I nicked myself. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, but we sell them in a bunch of different sizes because you can hopefully see there's no markings on them. They're just cut to the size that you are needing to use. And then they have etch lines corner to corner. They have a grippy on them because you see I'm just turning it. It grips to the fabric to trim to size. It makes trimming a lot easier, especially for half square triangles and um, hourglass blocks. Jonna, I can see that. Um, I can see that. I think it looks, I think it looks really cool though. I am excited for her. I just, I, I would love to see it in person. And I'm curious if, if, from people who purchased it, what they think. And I like hearing um, people's feedback on what we make too, because it's really, really helpful. Um, oh, thanks Rosie. I'm so glad you love it. Um, now, what was I saying? <laughs> I, I love when people give us feedback on our products too, because I think it's really helpful for, um, you know, making things better with them. And so I'm curious to see what, what people think of the lighted ruler too. Uh, my husband is not lying. I do cut myself with literally, not just with sewing, with 
uh, cooking too. He always, when I am cutting stuff, comes out and tells me that I'm using the wrong knife for what I'm doing and I'm gonna hurt myself. But there's only like two knives that we have that I like. I, I prefer the smaller knives, the paring knives that are not meant for cutting bigger things, but you, you will, you, you can ask him, I will sit there with a paring knife and try to cut like a watermelon with it. But the, the large, huge, large knives just look so dangerous. <laughs> I actually cut myself um, on our cheese grater the other day because I was trying to watch something while I was grating and that doesn't work out well, I can tell you. So <laughs> don't do that. Uh, Brenda, yes. Yes, yes, I can see you. So if I missed a comment, I'm sorry. I am I am by myself today up here. So it's harder for me to keep up with the chat and, and work on this. Uh, okay, I need to press this. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many times I'm trying to cut cut stuff and he comes into the kitchen and is like, no, you need to stop. And he'll end up cutting for me. But maybe that is my plan. Maybe my plan is that if I'm cutting with the wrong knife, he will come just cut the stuff for me. <laughs> it's actually genius. <laughs> I'm not. Katie, me using a mandolin would be not a good idea because I'm sure that's even sharper than um, my old cheese grater. I don't even know why I use the, uh, no, I know why I use the handheld cheese grater, the manual one. It's because if I got out the um, food processor and put that attachment in, I would have like six things to clean. But with the handheld one, it's more work, but I only have to clean that. But I can tell you, it is a running joke in my house that I am constantly have inner injuries on me from either sewing or cooking. Uh, anytime my son sees me with a new bandaid on or like something like that, he's like, mom, what did you do now? <laughs> uh, Brenda, the, the building blocks I did, let me see. I don't know where it is though. Um, I did show it in a video. I finished it live a couple videos ago. So, if, um, that's not really helpful. <laughs> I do not know where it is in this room right now. Um, but I did finish the building blocks. It was actually a lot of fun. If you do go back and catch the live, I'll try to pin it in a comment after I'm done. I did talk about that it was a learning curve for me with the legit kit block because you're kind of looking at it reversed with the papers and I want to put the, I want to have the colors laid out facing up to me, the fabrics, and then put it right sides together, but you kind of have to look at it in reverse from the paper side. Um, so it was kind of hard for me at first to work through that block that way. But once I got it figured out, it went a little more smoothly. And I'm actually going to be doing the Rose Legit Kit. I bought that one. It's kind of smaller, but it isn't one of their beginner blocks. So I'm a little nervous about it, but I'm going to be working through that with Brenda, or not Brenda, with Donna. Um, and so I'm excited because she does a really good job with the legit kit. She's done a lot of them, so I know she'll be able to help me if I have any questions with that one, so I'm not worried about it. I did, I did, Brenda. I did enjoy working on it. Uh, I would, I would recommend, because I used a lot of print fabric, because I just pulled from my stash, so if you do download their free block, 
I would recommend trying to use a lot of low volume or um, just like um, just solid fabric because if you've never done a foundation paper piece block like that, having the solid prints I can see comes in so handy because there's no right or wrong side so you don't have to worry as much about about getting mixed up. Thanks for stopping by Rosie. And it does look like, let me know if I am correct, it does look like I got the uh, the ads turned off. Am I right? Have, has anybody, I don't think I've seen any more come up except for at the beginning and I think I got that fixed, so. Um, hopefully you haven't got any more ads since I grabbed my computer and went in there and changed it. So I'm going to keep working on this quilt during the live and get as much done as, it, as I can. But later today, I'm going to take my son to go see that movie Thanksgiving, which looks like a scarier movie, which I, I don't mind scary movies. I like them, but um, I just love going to movies in general, even if it's not going to be one like if it's not gonna be one I know I'll like, I still love going to movies. All right, I have to run to the restroom and I'm gonna let the dog go out to the restroom, so I'm sorry. I don't know how like Becca sets up something really cute on the screen when she does that, um, but I do wanna be able to stay on longer, so I'm gonna leave this up. If y'all could, that are in the chat, um, if anybody comes in and asks why there's nobody here, let them know I'll be back as soon as possible. I would appreciate it. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I should have. I just saw the comment to refill my water. I should have. It's pretty full. Um, 
but I, I, I honestly should have refilled it. So sorry about that. Um, but now I can hopefully sew for another hour or so before I need to get ready and me and my son go see that movie. <laughs> Dad jokes. No Ikea, that's funny. Okay, so back to my little wonky blocks. Thank you for bearing with me. So these are what I'm calling my wonky blocks, just in case anybody came in recently. I'm working on the wonky Christmas tree part of it is in the back here. And I do have another row of it finished that I need to add on. But right now, because I'm realizing the longest part to getting this quilt together is going to be getting all of these little squares surrounded with my tree fabric. So I'm gonna keep working through these and getting these little blocks done. I'll have a little bit more time to work on them, see how many more I can get finished. And then hopefully another hour I'll spend on here working on these and then I'll get my myself ready for a movie date with my son. Cause my husband does not, he loves movies, but he does not really enjoy going to movie theaters. And my daughter is very particular about the movies she'll see. But I think she actually does want to, she's interested in seeing this movie, but she is just busy today. Uh, Papu, I try to get up here and sew for a little bit every day. I don't always get to, but I usually don't have this amount of time to sew all at once. Uh, this is a rare, a rare little occasion that I can get a lot done, especially on weekends. I don't get up here to sew as much because we're usually really busy with soccer or other activities or things that we need to get done. Um, but I do try to get some sewing done every day if I can. You call them. <laughs> so I think it was last year my husband got a dad jokes. Like, I think it was a calendar. Am I right, babe? Did you get a quilt jokes, quilt of the day calendar or something of dad jokes? So he has a a big list of them. I think he has a book as well, maybe, if I'm remembering right. All right, so I kind of went off what went off script. I've mostly been starting on one side and kind of going around like log cabin style, but I've really been liking how they look if I trim off a corner of one with like a smaller piece and getting a little, a few little different shapes in here. So I feel like just, if you're gonna go wonky with these, just have fun with it and just make it really crazy. Or don't, if you don't want to, it's your book. <laughs> No, I don't put up videos every day or live stream every day. Part of the reason, even though I'm up here sewing and don't do this, is because during the week, um, my kids do their homeschool. So sometimes they'll have questions. They do have teachers with their online school. It's kind of set up like a private school, but online. Uh, but... They'll still need help every now and then on stuff they're working on. So it's just easier for me to have like scheduled live streams like on Wednesday with my husband or setting this up since I knew in advance I'd be up here and it'd be a little quieter. That would be fun to be able to like do a live more frequently where we just all sit and chat though, I do think. Maybe if you all do like this, this style, maybe... Um, maybe it's something 
I could try to schedule in advance more often to do during the day. It definitely wouldn't be able to be as long as, as this one though. Hi, Catherine. Thanks for stopping by. Need a bigger piece for over here. This one's going to be really crazy. Or maybe not. All right, I feel like I've been too quiet for too long. So let me think. What is a good little question? Me and my husband usually have little questions set up um, for when we run out of little things to share and talk about. Is everyone staying in town for Thanksgiving or do you have plans we're heading out out of town we're staying in for Thanksgiving we don't really have anywhere that we are going um we still need to actually plan our menu of what we're gonna make uh <laughs> I don't think I don't think we have anything planned beyond the turkey I know my husband usually likes to make green bean casserole he makes it from scratch like the um, the mushroom like sauce and all that. It's so good. Um, and my daughter, the only thing she really requests is sweet potato casserole. She likes the one, um, with like the crumble on top, like the sugar and nuts and stuff. She doesn't like the marshmallows as much on top. Um, and then she wants rolls. My son, I think he mainly just likes the, uh, mashed potatoes and gravy and, the stuffing so that may be our plan then is just to make everyone happy with those items <laughs> oh thank you pat i i'm so glad that you enjoy watching i um i would like to do more lives more often because this is fun but yeah it is it is hard though like i guess that's not really fair it's not hard it just is kind of like, um, if you watch Sean's live this morning where he was talking about when you're up here, kind of just talking to yourself and you feel like you're having a conversation with yourself on the live, it is kind of weird and different than if like my husband's here and we can kind of back and forth and one of us see what's going on in the chat and keep everything engaged. When you're by yourself, it is a little harder. <laughs> Oh, Julie, you be safe too. You be safe with your with your job and your travels. We really appreciate what you do. The all of us are getting to have Thanksgiving because of the work that you you do. Ooh, handwork, Sylvia. Four, you're you're leaving for four months. Wow. That is something I want to do more of. I so I have a list kind of in I need to get it on paper because I love having paper lists that I can check off. But I do have a list of kind of projects and things I want to either learn how to do with regards to quilting and then stuff that I want to improve a little more on. Like I started a few hand quilted, like hand stitched quilts that I've been working on and I need to finish those, but I kind of would get discouraged and stuff because I'm not 
really, really good at it, but there's a couple different things that I would like to try in the new year and improve on with quilting. If you have a list like that, I would love to hear what you are wanting to improve on too, or learn. I really want to do a collage quilt. Like, um, what are they? What is the brand called? Um, I think it's H E I and E Hein has a bunch. I bought some of her patterns. I really want to to do that. I don't think it's going to be hard to do. I've watched a few tutorial videos to kind of learn how to do it. What I'm worried about is I very much like a quick quilt. I like to see it start coming together quickly. And that's what motivates me to keep going is kind of seeing the design coming together and all that. I don't feel like the collage quilt process is quick like that. <laughs> So I'm really hoping I can stay motivated to keep working on it once I get started on it. Uh, thank you, Pat. I think a lot of times with stuff, it's more me getting in my own head and worrying about it more than like it actually is. Cause I think a lot of people who come onto these lives like to chat in the chat with each other and then just see the progress of what we're working on. Um, so I think it's something we worry about unnecessarily a lot. Oh, hi, Susan. I didn't see you hop on. I'm really, I'm trying to keep up with the chat, but I'm not the best at it. <laughs> My husband is really good at it when he, he's here. Hi, Teresa. Good morning. Oh, that's a good one, Laura. Why seams? Yes. I think Chris from So The Distance has a video where she shows that. I think she did one. I'll have to go look after. Um, but yes. Is it Lemoyne Star? Is that how you pronounce I don't know. I probably am not pronouncing it right because I am horrible at pronunciation. But I think I do too. I want to learn how to do that too. And... I think you need that technique if you're going to um, sew like um, hexagons and stuff like that. So that's one of the projects that is on my list that I want to work on more and improve more is, um, is quilting like by hand, like the paper piece quilts. Is that what it's called? Um, English paper piecing. I started some hexagons and that kind of is still in a project bag. I have a few of them done, but I, that's one that I want to improve on more and work on more. Thank you, Susan. So I'm trimming these all to 3.5 inches, but if you wanted to scale this idea down, you could definitely start out with a smaller little ornament for the center and then uh, smaller strips and trim to a smaller size if you wanted to. That was a good idea in the chat to, to make it on a smaller scale if you, if you don't need a larger Christmas quilt this year but you want a wall hanging or a table topper, sizing it down would be really easy to do. Oh, Kwandi, yeah, so there's so many different, there's, I have, um, I want to do that. And then the, like the Shishiko, I bought a panel to do that. I think that's how you say it. It's kind of like a big stitch look to it too. I want to do that. There's so, I want to get better at like larger quilt as you go quilts too. There's so much that I would like to improve on and learn how to do. 
Cindy, yes, I want to get better at the the foundation paper piecing too. I did get um I did get one. I see that you're <laughs> you're saying I'm reading the rest of your comment that you're gonna follow along. Did you download the their free building block pattern? That'd be a good practice one to do. Oh, a that's cute, Susan, a little plump look. I'll have to look at that. There's that technique too. Somebody, I'm sure someone in the comments will know what I'm talking about. Like where when you're quilting, you kind of like fluff up, you add some like fluff into it. I think um, Chris, again, from So The Distance showed one with one of her lessons from an old quilt where it was done like that, where you add the stuffing in so it gets that like fluffy look. It's a whole technique and I cannot think of what it is right now and it's going to bug me. So hopefully somebody knows what I'm talking about. I think that would be fun to learn how to do too, but I need to be better at quilting to do that, that technique. But there's so much out there. I, I know um, there's a bunch of like quilt jacket videos. I would love to make a quilt jacket at some point too. <sighs> so many things I would like to try out and learn and patterns I want to do. It's just, when do you find the time to do them all? Yes, Laura, that's what it is. Jonna too, you said it. Um, yes, I think that looks so amazing, but I feel like you have to have really good quilting foundation. Maybe you don't, I don't know, but um, I feel like you really need to. <laughs> Uh, Cindy, I would, um, I would do, I would start with, uh, solids if you can, if you have enough in your stash to pull for it, because I felt like the prints, I used so many different prints in mine that it really distracted from the design. And if you use solids when you're learning, it doesn't matter what side of the solid you use. So, um, I think that would make it a little easier to, to make sure that everything's, then having to worry about prints if you're getting everything right sides together. I think, um, Teresa, have you, have you done some of the legit kits? I think you have. Would you say, suggest solids too, or even, um, Batiks would probably, if you want to get some little extra design in there, batiks would probably work really well too. Cause I know, I know people have said there's like a front and a back to batiks and I really can only easily tell if there's like detail on it. Like if they've added some of like the silver or gold like um, accents, but I treat them kind of like solids otherwise, if, unless they have like that, that like little accent on them. I think batiks would work well too for the legit kits. And I know um, Teresa is much more skilled with batiks and knows about them much better than I do. So she could probably tell you better if there's a front, <laughs> if there is a definite front and back. I know I've read some stuff that there is and how to identify it. But I honestly don't remember what it is. And I think both sides look great. <laughs> I feel like they look so similar. And sometimes I'll just flip back and forth on the boutiques. And like what side happens to look prettier with how it's dyed. Because some, sometimes one side can have a little bit of a richer color. Or whatever. But most of the time they both look the same to me. Did you use the potato chip, um, like kind of pattern from, um, conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda? I think that's the first time I really saw that like potato chip block technique. I think, um, I think Jane, um, no, not Jane. It's. 
I know I saw somebody recently shared working on it. Uh, what do you want to see up close? Like the, the little block that I'm doing or when I'm trimming it, let me know and I'll try to get a closer shot. I have behind me, do you want me to take down the tree and show it closer? I can do that too. Um, did they really? So in case you're new to my channel, first husband of quilting is my husband and he often gets live on here live with me, but he cannot today. I did not know that husband. I did not know. Okay. The block. Yes. So this is, I don't know if that's even close enough. Let's see the, the, I'm calling them my wonky ornament blocks and they're all a different print. Um, well, not all a different print, but I'm using a bunch of different just scraps of fabric that are Christmassy to make the little ornaments on the tree that I'm working on. And then I will, I, I have another camera view here. So when I go to trim up this block, I'll try to get trimming it closer but you really uh you don't have to surround these in any particular way or trim them in any particular way except to just get it to 3.5 inches if you're using the same scale that i'm using or if you're going to size this smaller um get it down to whatever size you're choosing to have the block to build the tree <laughs> pastry queen yeah he's probably pretty proud of coming up with it as well <laughs> knowing knowing my husband uh so i think my husband and he can correct me if i'm wrong he really likes to create things as well. He, um, he likes to do woodworking and metalworking and all that sort of stuff. So he really likes to create as well. And he actually has a really good eye for color. When he comes with me to the quilt shop, um, he's really helpful with picking out fabrics and stuff as well. So I think for him, Part of the aspect he likes with quilting is he loves math and numbers, and there's a lot of math that goes into quilting too. But I think it's a mixture of a lot of stuff. He just, he really likes, um, he, <laughs> or that, if you read his comment, <laughs> that's not true. I bugged him enough to come up here and sew with me that he finally gave in. No, but he's really, he's really creative too. Ooh, Catherine got me, got there before me. Is it the Marine Corps birthday today and I missed it? I'm sorry, husband. I don't even know what is the date today. Ooh, that's so Nova. Hi there. I'm glad to see you on. If uh, any of you are into bag making, uh, that Sonova has a wonderful channel. She is a gorgeous bag maker. Um, her handbags are absolutely amazing. And she is a really good teacher. And I am, I'm not sewing right now with thread. So. <laughs> but definitely definitely check out her channel if you are interested in bag making because she is amazing and she uh she does markets too so if she's ever at one that you're able to go to and see her bags in person i bet they're even more amazing in person i need to clean this out
Uh, I will try to add her link. Just give me a second because my computer died and I don't know if I can from my phone. Um, and I don't think she, since she's not an admin, she can, um, that's Sonova. If you want, if you, I don't think you can put a link in the chat here, but if you want to in the comments on this video, uh, feel free to do that. And I will try to get one added in, in the chat if I can figure it out. Um, but yeah, that's Sonova. Check out her channel. I'm sure in um, the search on YouTube, you'd be able to find it really easily. But her, her bag making seal, I like, I am always so impressed. I love making bags, but I do not have, um, I have not made enough yet to have the eye that she has for combinations of, of fabrics that she uses and materials. And she does like a lot of those really like, cool um, bags that are themed for popular shows and movies. I think she had some that are like Harry Potter and things like she is really, really talented. I think she's, um, I think she's even a pattern tester for a few uh, different designers too. Uh, that's Sonova. Who do you pattern? I know you pattern test for a few if you're able to say or want to say. Um, oh, thank you. I I will say sometimes I'm harder on myself than I should be, but I can honestly and fully, fully and truly say I'm nowhere near as great as you are, but, um, but I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, her bag making, definitely check it out. Even if you aren't interested in making a bag, it is really fun to watch her process. And she is, has such a great personality too. Super fun watching her videos. Are you doing the, um, the Sally Tomato unboxing this year? If they did, I think they did a, another advent box. I know, I know you have, in, and you did another, another box too, but if you have any, are you doing them again with your family? Cause that is really fun to watch too. Yeah, I thought you had a few. I didn't get the Sally tomato this year. Um, I didn't because I, I, I love their advent box. I think it is really, really good. I just don't make bags as much as I would love to. I love making, but quilting, usually when I have projects I wanna work on comes first and then bags later. The only time I squeeze in getting bags done is honestly when lavender and twine, I think it is, I think it's lavender and twine, releases a new pattern that really speaks to me, then I'll make a couple of those, but I think, I think their box is really good though. But if, if she's doing her advent unboxing again with her family, that is so fun to watch because she will usually have like an advent that's sewing related and then her kids and her husband have an advent and it's really fun watching them each open each day. <laughs> my iron is over here but I keep looking for it over here oh that's that's cool I did I so I got the Jenny's Countdown to Christmas box this year, and then I got the Open Gate Quill box, but those are the only two I am doing this year. I 
must not have done, I must not have put the bobbin in right. I'm sewing nothing. I can't talk and, and put a bobbin in correctly, apparently. Husband, when are you hoping to have the uh, trays up, though? You're wanting to have them up, some up next week, right? Okay, I think I have the, the bobbin thread right now. I don't think we've set up like to do pre-orders in our shop. Um, I don't know, so they were out. I need to get better at looking at our shop stuff and maintaining it too, I guess. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that. I wonder why our shop doesn't alert us when stuff's out of stock. Maybe it just assumes that we are paying attention. Yep, I'm sewing. Now I'm paranoid that I'm sewing without thread again. <laughs> okay, good. I thought we had talked about it before you headed out for the day that we would try to have them up next week but I'm, I am notorious for thinking I'm listening but not actually <laughs> listening. I hear what I want to hear. Yeah I thought we were wanting to have them up like um at the end of the week so that people could hopefully get them if they wanted them as Christmas gifts or anything like that. That's okay, Papu. Um, You know, like where we all have budgets that we have to stick to, they are available individually too. Like um, you don't have to purchase a bundle, but budgets are important to stick to and we definitely understand that. Oh, I forgot to put the other camera angle on to show you trimming it. <laughs> I think I got sidetracked from having to change out the bobbin and all that. I'll try to remember on the next one. Oh, goodness. I'm going to do one of these purple ones because these make me happy. This color makes me happy. I love lavender. Um, oh, your birthday is December 8th, Julie. It's coming up. Birthday is coming up. Um, let's see. What do I want to do with this one? Do I want to, I wonder if I should make some that, because I've been making all of them kind of like wonky and trying not to have them look like a square at all, but I wonder if I should do some that do just look like a square and are surrounded like a square. I think I'm going to do one that way and just see how it looks. 
Well, I know how it's going to look, but I think I could have fun trimming it so that it still kind of looks different too. Shadow, I just realized you came up here. You tired pup. So I think I'm just gonna square, go around this one with just like, just like I would like a log cabin block. And then I think I'll have fun with how I trim it. Well, thank you for stopping by Pastry Queen. Chili sounds really good, actually. <laughs> Chili sounds really good with like a piece of really good cornbread. I said really good cornbread and then I was gonna say, is there a not good cornbread? But there really is a not good cornbread. I've had very dry cornbread, but typically I just love anything that has the word bread in it. If it's a bread, usually I'm on board. Now that mention of chili, just let me know that I'm really hungry. <laughs> it must be getting close to noon. So that chili talk got me thinking about chili and now that I want some chili. So the debate with me and my husband is always about what a chili should look like in the sense I am okay if there are beans in chili and he is very much against a bean being anywhere near his chili. <laughs> He says that if there is beans and chili, then it's a soup. <laughs> I, I am, I am fine if there are beans and chili, and I actually quite prefer there to be beans and chili. <laughs> John. There, if, if sugar is in the cornbread, then it's cake. <laughs> I actually really like a sweet cornbread. Keto chili and cornbread. I think you like if you're wanting to get one of the trim locks in a size is maybe look at some of the upcoming patterns you're wanting to work on and see if there's a size that will work with the pattern that you are wanting to do or if there's a go-to pattern that you have um I don't know maybe some people in the chat have some ideas on what might be a good size too I know my husband suggested the I think he said the five inch because you can cut down your scraps to five inch squares really easily with them and use it to make your own charm packs and, and use for charm pack patterns that you may have. So that's a good idea too. Um, and I forgot to bring it in to trim another one. That probably just isn't gonna happen with zooming in. I need my husband here to keep me on track. Oh, a four, you need a four inch and a five inch. Mm. <laughs> chili cake. Cake is good though. Then you can have chili with your dessert built in. <laughs> Did 
anyone say no beans or pasta in my chili? Ah, oh, everyone always agrees with my husband. <laughs> he uh, he had everyone agreeing with him too on how I eat my eggs not being not being good. <laughs> I'm not surprised though. My food tastes are um my food tastes are very different than his. And his seems to line up with everyone else's taste. Ah, Julie, thank you. Beans, <laughs> but you like beans, but maybe not your chili. Is that what you're gonna say? <laughs> Oh, good, Gwendolyn. Yeah, I think they're good in chili. But, I don't know, my husband says that it's soup. <laughs> I can, um, I just, if I change the angle now, then I don't think you'll be able to see me sewing and stuff. So I do, I do just need to remember. <laughs> and I don't even, it looks like the angle that I put this at, I wonder if I hit the camera um, when I left earlier for a little bit, because it doesn't look like it's even going to be, I'm just pulling these, that piece off now, because it's not going to be in the stitches. Um, might not even be a good angle anymore. Teresa, I do like sweet cornbread. I don't mind if the corn, the only thing I don't like with cornbread, the only thing that will make me not love the cornbread is if, if it's dry, but even then I'll probably still eat it because I mean, it has bread in the name. So I'm all about bread is I'll probably just put a lot of butter on it and then the dry doesn't matter. So I'll probably always make the the cornbread work. Oh, Nova, um, so the little ruler that I keep using is one that me and my husband make. Um, we make those, the little rulers. He makes, um, he cuts them out and he has a laser that puts the angle lines on them. And we put the grips on the bottom and the handles on them. So they definitely come in handy. Oh, hi, Becca. Thank you for stopping in to say hi. Appreciate it. Be safe on your, on all of your errands. So I kind of think the bean thing, I wonder if it's like regional to the area that you live to whether or not beans are thought of as a component of chili or not. Yeah, I love cornbread. Now I want some cornbread and chili, but I don't think I have anything to make that <laughs> right now. I might have to get the stuff for it when I go to the movie with my son later after the movie, run into the store and get stuff because that is sounding really, really good now. Okay, let me see. Hopefully, I remembered to put it down, but hopefully it doesn't look like it's going to be a great 
angle for when I cut this anymore. I don't know if I hit the camera or if I didn't tighten it and it keeps lowering could be what's happening, but hopefully you'll be able to see it a little bit better than the other angle I was at. Hopefully, I can't tell. But, so what I have been doing is when I set this ruler down, I usually try to get the handle to like where it looks like it's the center of the block and then I just keep turning it so that however the design for the, what I'm calling the ornament in there, the, the Christmassy fabric, I'm just trying to get it to an angle that I think looks nice and will look nice when it gets sewn in with the tree. So once I get it lined up how I like it, then I just cut one side and then turn the ruler using the handle, cut another side. And you don't need a ton of pressure to get the grips on the bottom to grip the fabric so that you can turn easily and trim all sides. Whatever of these look like they might be big enough to use on one of the sides I keep and then the rest I just go ahead and toss at this point. I know I could probably use some of those scraps to stuff you know, a pillow later or something, but I have so many scraps at this point, some of them, I'm just like, it's not, it, it's too much to keep fussing with them and keeping them organized and everything. Um, so there's that, I just had, to, I had to start getting used to, sometimes I can't just hold on to everything and hope that I use it at some point. I have a limited space. So let's see. Hopefully that angle, I do have a bunch of videos up showing better angles from recorded videos of using the trim lock. And I will have a more formal tutorial of this quilt come up at some point too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For something like this, it honestly does not matter how the ruler gets on there as long as it's, you know, covering uh, there's fabric on all ends and then just cut for this style of block. It's just a crazy wonky block. All right, so let's make another one of these little guys or do you want to see me put another row together? I probably have time to do one more wonky block and a row before I need to go get ready to head to the movies. So maybe I'll do that. I'll get one more wonky block in a row. Um, and if I get a chance to work on this quilt some more today, maybe what I'll do is put up a short video to show how many rows I got together on it. That might be fun. Let me know if you want to see that. I should be able to get some more rows added on later after the movie. See it come together a little bit more. But I love this kind of sewing where you just, you don't have to put a whole lot of like thought and stress into any component of it. Any, like, even if my seams are off for something like this, it does not matter because I'm trimming it down to the 3.5 inch size that I need. So this part is just easy sewing. husband you like jalapenos in anything you will you just like any hot food well spicy I should say spicy food we'll go to like a restaurant and um especially like Thai restaurants We'll go to a restaurant and they'll have levels to spice to a lot of their dishes and he will want the spiciest one there and they're like oh like if you order it that way um we're not gonna remake it for you like this if the spicy is too much and it's the spicy is never enough <laughs> he'll one of them we went to recently he had them bring a whole little dish of peppers that he added in later because um, it still wasn't spicy enough for him.
happy well I'll get another row together too and I should have time to do that after I finish up this one Oh, that's a good question. I don't know if Becca is still on since she said she was out running errands, but um, yeah, hopefully he's he's fine. He seemed fine on the live yesterday, and I think when he when he fell, um, that was a few days before the live. So I think he's probably fine, just sore. One more side on this one. I I like spicy food, Pat. I really do, but I can't go as spicy as my husband can. And I am really, like, I feel some dishes people go, not people, but at restaurants and stuff, they go so spicy that like the other flavors in the dish don't come out. Like I think spicy needs to be done really well for me where you can still like taste the other components of the dish. I don't, I guess I don't like the spice for spice sake. I appreciate spicy food. I just need to be able to taste the dish still. All right, so there's that one. This one's turned out really cute with the little snowflake on there. Um, so, so cute. Those little fussy cut ones that I spent time doing were a lot of fun. Um, fun to add in. So I need to look back. So three, four, five. So I did row six. I think I forgot to check that off. So I'm just double checking. And, oh, there's my pen. See where I was at there. And so we're on row seven. So I need five background squares for each side of the tree portion. So I'm just gonna get some random squares here. So I have five for each side and then I need to build the tree portion. And so I'm gonna have a half square triangle on each side. And then let's see how many, seven of my wonky blocks in the middle. I'm gonna run out of space here. So seven, I'm just gonna grab seven and then I'll kind of look to see where they may need to go on here to not have the same ones next to each other. Did I just get six only? I think I only got six. Yeah, six, so I need one more. Let's see, ooh, I have this plaid one. I don't have one of those in there. My stomach's starting to growl. <laughs> All this food talk, my stomach's like, you need to, you need to feed me. Okay, what I can do is just put this up here and kind of see. I probably won't be able to. You know what? We're just going to hope that I like how it lines up. We're just going to go with it, how it's laid out. It will be fine. So maybe for the rest of it, I will 
plan better and lay it out somewhere, but we're just gonna go with it how it is. So I just stacked all those up that, based on the row seven layout here, just stacked them up in order. And I'm gonna sew them together in the row and press it. Yes, Katie, I am coming along with these. I'm going to maybe just stay on for this row and then go eat something really quick and get ready to go to the movie with my son. We are going to go see Thanksgiving and um, it looks like it's going to be a little bit of a scary movie, which I don't mind. I kind of like scary movies sometimes. So I think it'll be It'll be interesting. I'm not sure based on the previews. Some of these are really tough because the previews sometimes, one, don't show the movie really well. <clears throat> and then, or all the interesting parts to the movie are in the previews. So, we'll see. I like going to movies no matter what. Usually I'm going to press these seams as I work through here in one direction or the other. I'm not going to on this block because I think when I did the other row, I pressed them in the wrong direction from the one before. I think I started pressing it in the right direction and then went wrong. So I'm going to need to fix that before I sew it together. So normally as I work through this, when I'm not distracted, and trying to chat and all that I would finger press them as I go but um yeah I'm skipping that right now just because I think I need to go back and fix the other one <laughs> it won't ruin the day Katie it's all like it's all just in um in good fun well, I knew yeah, everybody's gonna have their opinion. It's like um the movie Oh Violent Night. That one's kind of like a scarier movie. Christmas movie, and I really enjoyed it. Because a lot of times with those there is a message in there, like on um on them. But everybody has a different taste in movie and that's okay. It might be a good movie, it might not. And everybody's idea of good is going to be different, too. <laughs> Fabio, I do, too. I, you know, there's some scary movies that just aren't for me, though. Like, I don't, I, like, the Chucky movies, I never could get into those with the doll and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, most of them, though, I like to watch with my son. But Katie, you do like Die Hard, it sounded like, and that's like a scary movie on Christmas. Uh, Gwendolyn, if you're asking what movie me and my son are going to see, it's called Thanksgiving and it's like a scary, it looks like it's a scary movie. I'm not sure based on the like previews which what way they're going with it it just looks like it's kind of like a scary a scary movie <laughs> has been your funny You didn't think it was, I think, like, I don't know, action movies sometimes can be kind of scary to me, but I think it's all relative on what people. I don't know. I'm looking forward to seeing the movie, but I can separate, like, movies from real life and stuff like that, so. For me, it's not a problem because I watch, um, um, like, you know, true, I listen to a lot of true crime and stuff like that. So 
I think for me, there's a separation there. So one thing that is tough with for me with um, tone on tone fabrics is sometimes when I'm in a groove with sewing, I will almost want to sew the wrong side of the fabric right sides together. And now I'm questioning, no, I got that one right. Because when I stacked these, I don't think I paid attention on this polka dot one. Um, for, cause I try to stack them right side up if, if I'm using one that isn't really noticeable for it to be right, right side. Yeah, that's, I agree, Jonna. Um, some of them can just be gory just for the sake of gore. <laughs> Pat boo, yeah. As long as it's a good movie. See, for me, I like the whole experience of going to movies, and I think it's just a lot of fun. And my son really likes it, too, so it's fun to have something to go do with him that he really enjoys doing, too. Especially because, like, both of my kids are getting older, and, you know, like, there's less and less that they want to hang out with mom doing. <laughs> And so when they want to do something fun like that, I'm like, yeah, let's go. Me and him actually played Scrabble last night, though. That was kind of fun. Um, we were trying to find, because it was just me and him hanging out at home at that time. And we were trying to figure out, like, a game or something that was a good two-person game that we have. It's a lot of the games that we have, board games and stuff, are for multiple people. So, um, we ended up with Scrabble, and I think he's only tried to play that with me once before. Now, if he played it with my husband, he would probably get really discouraged because my husband is very, very good at Scrabble. Um, I'll be sitting around with, like, a score of 100 or less, and he'll have like 200, 300. I don't even remember, because I don't think we've played Scrabble in quite a long time together, because he is way too good at it. That's a good idea, Bambi. I think it was funny, because yesterday in Becca's Live, I think they were talking about, somebody gave the suggestion, and maybe it was on So Yeah, I think they were saying, is using a black light on the, um, on the fabric because that kind of shinier side shines more under the black light so you'll know, easily know what side is right side on that as well so i think i'll do a short video later today when i get those rows fixed well the way the seams are pressed and sewn on and i'll try to get some more rows done so i can update and i'll maybe do a community post too and just show take a photo of it and show where I'm at with it. So I have seven rows done. There's 19 rows on this quilt. So I'm not halfway there, but I'm making good progress. And I have a de decent stack of my little wonky blocks too. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions about this quilt before I hop off here. Uh, I am, I do have a lot of the details about the cutting and everything for this quilt. In the description of this video, it is just a pattern that I designed. I don't have a formal pattern written up for it because this was literally me just working through it yesterday and today and making sure the sizes and everything worked. Uh, I will put together a PDF with the cut sizes and all that. And um, I'll put the layout. So if you wanna make this quilt, you can do that. It would be really easy to size it down like someone suggested in the comments earlier. Um, you could definitely make it smaller so it's like a wall hanging size or take out a few of the rows. You could cut it off at this layer and put the um, tree stump and stuff. A lot of things you could do to make it your own. Um, oh, thank you, Pat Boo. I have a lot of fun sharing 
uh, my joy for quilting and what I come up with, anything I've learned. So it's a lot of fun for me to be here and I appreciate all of you that, that come and hang out with me. Oh, thank you, Glenda. I was not sure how this would come out and uh, I'm liking how it's, I think it's gonna be a fun, just scrappy, wonky, Christmas tree. I think it'll be fun and I'm excited with how it's turning out. It's always fun when an idea that kind of comes into my head and um, sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't. And this one I was kind of worried about because I put up that I was going to, I put up the thumbnail and scheduled the live and was like, this is just going to happen. And then I decided I needed to work on some of it to make sure I could work out any kinks. So I was doing that last night and got the first two rows done and just thought, oh, this might actually be a mess and not turn out. But I think it's turning out fun. And I know this style and it being crazy and not lined up right isn't for everyone. And if you don't like it, it does not hurt my feelings. I like scrappy quilts. They're not for everyone and that is absolutely fine. So <laughs> that is okay. Uh, Gwendolyn, we will look out for that. Um, so yes, husband, we do need to, well, we do that on Wednesdays or do you mean like another longer random one on the weekend? Uh, so I'll stay on like a minute or two more, see if there's any questions. Hopefully I answered them all. If you're wanting to make something like this in the description, I will have a more streamlined tutorial come out, out soon with, um, the different components of the block and walking through them with better angles so you can see it better and all that. But, um, yeah, thank you, Jamie. It was fun. Um, thank you, Glenda. We will. Well, hopefully we will. We're going to have fun either way, but hopefully we will enjoy the movie. Um, so yeah. So if you are catching this on the replay, it's going to be a really long replay, but if you do happen to catch it on the replay and have any questions, I will try to get to them in the comments. I try to do my best with comments. I appreciate every comment that we get. It can just be sometimes hard to keep up with them. So if you don't get a reply, please don't get offended. Sometimes I just miss them when they come through and sometimes I see them and read them and plan to comment back and then it slips my brain. So I do try to get to them though and if it is a specific question, I especially try to get to them. Uh, Kat Boo, like I think my, um, I think I put it in the description and if I didn't, I will be sure to post it. I think it was around 50 inches by 50 inches that's going to come out to and it looks like I missed putting it in here um I know I wrote it down somewhere and now I don't I don't I think it I must have thought that I wrote it down and didn't but it's not on any of my notes so I apologize I think it's somewhere around 50 by 50 inches so 19 what is my husband what is 19 times three <laughs> uh let me find a calculator. Fifty-seven. So I think it's around. It'll be around fifty-seven inches square. So I don't know why I thought I wrote it down, uh, but yeah, I must have because I know I went back into the program I used to get that, and it's probably on another paper somewhere. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, I am, I am completely a hundred percent human and make mistakes and, uh, I'm fine with that. And all of my quilts have mistakes in them and I've learned to just love them. All right. So I am going to hop off here, get something to eat with my son and get ready to go to the movie. I really enjoyed being on here live with all of you and I had a lot of fun. Thank you for keeping me company while I worked on the quilt. I will post some updates of it and a full tutorial along with the PDF of the tree and all that at some point. Hopefully this weekend I will have the PDF and everything up, but I don't think the video tutorial portion will be up um, for a few more weeks so I can get it edited and all that. But I had a lot of fun. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and thank you for hanging out with me. Bye.